right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Thomas Ryan, who is in, I would say, a probably equally, if not even sunnier, South Florida. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing great. How are you? Excellent, excellent. And Tom is the CEO and founder of Bigly Sales, the AI sales automation company. Close more deals with Bigly Sales AI agents. Unleash the power of AI to dominate your sales targets. Uh, Tom was previously CEO at of WorkBeast, and he served on the board of Barton and Associates for over ten years. While revenues grew fifteen hundred fifteen hundred percent. Now that's nice for anybody's in anybody's book. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is literally that is unleashing the power of AI for sales. So, um, Tom, can I just start out, just bottom line this for our audience, okay? Sure. Let's face it, over the last over the last six months or so, maybe even more, everybody's been bombarded with AI and AI tools and AI will do this for you and AI sales tools and all that. What, what made you get into this and into the AI part of Bigly Sales and what has it done and what has it meant for your product and for your customers? Uh, because I think people really want to get through some of this noise and, and understand what's real. Sure. So we started as a send-in platform and we pivoted into AI. So I already had a platform that could send out tens of thousands of texts, emails, mm -hmm. uh, deal with trigger events anytime someone opened an email, anytime a new message was received that we could, you know, respond back. Um, and uh, of course, phone calls as well. So, you know, that was the base product that I began with. And we'd been talking to clients and we found a couple of different issues, um, you know, that they really wanted to automate all of their outreach and they just wanted leads to come in the door. They want their phones to ring. They um, want appointments set for them. So that's what we decided to give them. And that's what the customers were asking for. So um, rather than have some, you know, person in the Philippines or in Pakistan or something like that who was using the tool for them to do all the busy work, we said we can automate this and do a better job. Um, so th that's the whole genesis of it. Uh, as far as AI itself, um, you know, there's a lot of things out there. There's a lot of fads that people are like, this is going to change the world. This is going to be the next big thing. Uh, you know, this is going to end the world. <laughs> this, I'm less concerned about it ending the world. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be the biggest productivity boom in human history. Yeah, is really what it's going to be. Um, anything that you can do on a computer right now, AI can already do faster and better, or will be able to do faster and better in the next year or so. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they really just opened the API for open AI without that. It, it's, it's a tool. It's a useful tool. It's, um, you know, a toy for a lot of people that they would kind of go and play with it. But mm -hmm. without the internet access and without the API, you know, it, it's not that big a deal. Yeah. Um, so now, let, me, let me ask you a good question, because one of the things sure. that people people are concerned about when it comes to AI tools is uh, is how is I agree. I think it's going to I think it's going to revolutionize everything. But right now, some people are you know saying well you know they're not sure about the accuracy they're not sure about this they're not sure about that uh, how can you reassure people that like when they use a product like yours that it, it's going to do what it says so what we do is we feed the data in right mm -hmm. um we'll take all of your sales documentation we'll take right. all of your product specs we'll take all of your best practices um you know your warranties your offers whatever and we'll feed that into the ai and it will spit out whatever we feed in so if we have 100 pages mm -hmm. of documentation that we feed into it, it's going to give you exactly what you have put in. It's not going to hallucinate. It's not going to guess. It's going to give you, you know, the exact thing every time. It's not going to lie. It's not going to make some fun. Mm -hmm. And we tell it, don't guess, don't lie, don't make things up, right? Like we literally write right. that in the instructions, um, you know, so it, it doesn't. Um, it, mm -hmm. But you know, if you say, look, we want you to be very literal and answer these questions as they're asked, um, it will do exactly that. So, you know, it's like taking a sales rep and having them know everything about your business. Mm -hmm. um, now yeah. you just have to work on training one sales rep instead of training hundreds or dozens. Right, and right, the right. person's never going to quit, right? They're, they're never going to take a day off. They're never going to get sick. 
So <laughs> until until AI until AI gets so big that they actually turn into people and they go, actually, I want a day off today. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't see that happening. I mean, yeah, everyone I mean, jokes around with it. It's just autocomplete right now. It's the most advanced yeah. autocomplete ever constructed. They take everything mm -hmm. that's ever been said, every you know piece of video, um, every piece of written word that's there on the internet, and they feed it into it and they train it on that and then the ai is able to you know basically see well in the past when someone asked this question these were what we found as the most common answers or the best answers and it will provide that so mm -hmm. it's really just autocomplete the same way when you go to google and you start typing something yeah. right you say like uh you know cancun and it says flights hotels right things to do It'll give you mm -hmm. all the different options because it knows what people have searched for. And yeah. this, it does the yeah. exact same thing, just on a grander scale. Uh, what do you say? To, so to the to the good salespeople out there who are kind of nervous about you know AI, what do you say to them? Because I personally believe that AI is going to help them actually even elevate because it allow them to you know focus on the high value things like relationship building and all of that but what 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 would you say to to good you know i'm not talking about the law i'm talking about good sales people out there why they should why ai is something they should embrace yeah i, I think the people who are in trouble by this let me start with that is going to be the yeah. folks that are offshore uh you know the people in the philippines the call centers that are in the philippines the call centers that are in pakistan the call centers that are you know around the globe where the mm -hmm. big benefit is they're cheap um they're in trouble right the, those yeah. those people their jobs are probably going away within the next few months you know um in mass in the next year or two uh those jobs are going to disappear right yeah as far as the good sales people the ai will do all the busy work it will do all the qualification for you and then let you deal with the high value work so you should make much more money. Mm -hmm. That's that's the goal, you know, to, to use yeah. this to make a lot more money, make your life easier and get rid of all the busy work that you are doing right now. A new prospect calls in. You don't know anything about this person, you know, and they don't have two nickels to rub together rather than have to get on the phone with that person and deal with that. You know, now you can set up a pipeline. You can have the AI qualify people for you and you can say, send me the people that have over a hundred thousand dollars to spend right right and, and if you think about that like tom that's a great point because you think about that i mean as you know time is the only thing you can't produce more of obviously but what is one of the biggest complaints uh or the biggest heartaches that that sales have is like when they end up you know chasing leads or prospects that aren't the right fit or waste their time that they have to uncover they have to uncover that the fact that they don't have two diamonds to rub together but it's already cost them time. And then just time, also focus. Because I mean, here's the thing is, you know that uh, I was talking to somebody recently, you know that idea of, I just wanna interrupt you for one minute, Tom, and tell you something, right? I interrupt you for one minute, you tell me something, it takes you an average about 20 minutes to, ha to 30 minutes to get back focused on what you were doing beforehand, right? So that whole idea of, if you don't have to waste any of that time to think of the time savings that are there for sales reps to, to really build relationships and do the high value work. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's that's exactly how this works. It allows you to do the high value work without wasting time on the grunt work. Um, mm -hmm. So you can outsource that lower level work to the AI and then you can focus on the stuff that it's really value producing. So it should increase any serious sales reps value tremendously. Um, and if you look at it from an organizational perspective rather than from an individual perspective, um, if you don't call a lead within about an hour, there's something like a 95% mm -hmm. drop off in the amount of times that you're yeah. going to close that person. And that's across industries. If someone has a real need and think of anything, like if I'm calling around because I have a problem with my air condition and the first person doesn't pick up the phone and the, the yeah. I put in a form online for someone else and they get back to me three days later. I've had that thing fixed two and a half days ago, right? I, I got, I called until I found someone, that person said, oh, I'm available, I can come out in the next 30 minutes. And by the time that other company called me back three days later, I've already solved my problem because it's an immediate need. Mm -hmm. um, 
so what we set up the, the AI to do, we have this um, on SMS, we have a product that's live right now, and it will automatically re respond. So a lead will come in, we'll get a lead from any form fill online, from you know, Google, from Facebook, from an SEO page, from wherever that lead will come in, we'll automate out a text message to that person, trying to schedule an appointment with them to see when they're available. They'll be able to ask any questions they may have, we'll answer any questions that they may have. If there's qualification questions, we can ask those qualifications as well. Um, you know, do you own your own home? Uh, mm -hmm. Are you over 65, right? Do you have at least $100,000 of uh, liquid assets? Wh whatever those questions might be that you need to get answered, we can have the AI ask those questions, make sure they actually get an answer for those questions. And only if the person actually qualifies, will it get passed on to that rep, or maybe it gets passed to a different department, a, a department that deals with, you know, lower level, uh, you know, right. less valuable people, but it doesn't go to that top salesperson. So they can, you know, focus on the top hundred accounts or the people that they know would be a top hundred account for them. Um, so mm -hmm. it, it does that, it does it instantaneously. It then follows up with that person. If the person doesn't respond back to them right away, a half hour later, it'll follow up again, then it'll follow up again, then you know, wait a few hours and follow up again. And basically it'll keep following up until someone either books that appointment with them or makes the call or whatever that trigger action is that we want. Mm -hmm. um, or on the other side of the coin, if they say, hey, wasn't me, I'm not interested, you yeah. know, uh, I thought this was something else. Stop, right? Unsubscribe. It'll it'll stop. But until one of yeah. those two things happens, it's going to work tirelessly. And if you're an organization that gets a lot of leads, right? It's not that people are lazy. If you get a hundred leads yeah. in a day, and you know you have a handful of people on your team, you can't possibly reach them all, right? No, absolutely. No, ab ab absolutely. And what I like about that, Tom, is. Uh... One of one of my pet peeves is is junky uh, pipelines, right? You know where people dump tons of stuff into the first stage of their pipeline uh, just to make themselves feel good, uh, and you know ninety percent of that turns out to be junk. I, I'm a much big believer in having less in your having less but better qualified in your pipeline. So this this is almost like a, a a good this is a good quality control piece to have in there. Yeah, exactly right. You can qualify anything this way. And the other thing that you can do, if there's people who waste your time asking questions that are, mm -hmm. you know, something that they could find on the website probably if they looked around or, um, you know, questions that are just very standard questions that aren't buying questions. Right. Hey, what are you guys' hours? Are you open tomorrow? Um, you know, uh, do you have this type of product in stock? Do you have this? Well, you can have the AI answer all of those things. Right, the AI can can answer that and do the same exact thing for level one support. So, one of the things that annoys the hell out of me is every tech company that I deal with, or almost every tech company. I think Amazon's an exception. If I have a question about something, I go and I fill out a chat form, and either they try to give me a live agent whose response time is ten minutes, five minutes, an hour, yep. right? Or it says, "Hey, our live agents will be back tomorrow. You know, we'll talk to you at like ten a.m." <laughs> Uh, or if they're in California, we'll talk to you, you know, at noon your time, right? Um, which is very frustrating. Or they say, here's some articles that can help. And then they, they give me yeah. homework, right? Read these four articles, <laughs> you know, and I'm trying to solve a problem that's probably pretty mission critical or, or important if, if I'm actually yeah. going out to try to deal with it right then and there. And they say, okay, here's some homework assignments for you. And hopefully that helps. And if it doesn't, you know, mm -hmm. well, good luck to you. Right. So yeah. the AI can fix that. The AI can go and take all their technical documentation, read all the tech, you know, have it all there. We put it in vector databases where we can organize it very easily. And then it can answer any questions, but with an actual answer to the question that I gave it. Right. Yeah. This is, do you remember when Ask.com came out and they kind of said they were going to do this yeah. and then they just sent you to web pages? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was like, oh, yeah, exactly. it didn't work. Right? Well, yeah, I remember. I remember. Well, now it works. And, uh, Ask Jeeves. Yeah, yeah. Now, now it works, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, exactly. That that concept actually actually works. You're you're correct. Um, absolutely. And and uh, 
you know, an, another thing, to, another thing too about it is, uh, is what you were just mentioning there is, I mean, I had, a, I had an awful experience the last couple of weeks as I was, I don't name the company because I'm that big name and shamer, but it's a cable company and I was trying to cancel everything because I was switching to fiber optic uh, internet provider. Like you said, uh, you go on the chat, first of all, it's a bot, right? You know, how can I cancel? Oh no, you need a live agent for that. Okay, fine. Live agent comes on the chat, start. Oh no, you need to go, you need to call this number. And then I call that number and they say, oh, you want to cancel? I have to, no, you have to go transfer you to the retention yeah, department. Yeah, you're a Comcast client, and then, the you? <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then the retention department tells me, it starts asking me a bunch of questions and I'm just saying, no, 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 forget all of that. I just want to cancel. And they say to me, literally, I have to ask you all of these questions. So if you stop interrupting me, we can get through this process faster. And, and then, of course, I got through it, but they didn't do it. And it's taken me two other calls to get all this sorted out. But there is a great example of, of just the so convoluted. And my original question could really easily have been answered. And I could have been put to the right person from the get-go. Yeah, and we're working on voice right now. We're going to have that product mm -hmm. out probably in March. Um, that, that's what right. we're thinking at the moment. Um, we have it working in our sandbox. We're testing it. We're playing around with it. You know, it's working pretty well. But to have it fully integrated and ready to go, it's probably going to be March. And the whole idea is to solve that problem. That instead of getting an IVR system, which I despise, right? You're going mm -hmm. to get someone that sounds like a real person. They could sound like you. They could sound like me. They could sound like Elizabeth Hurley, right? We can take any voice. We can clone it. We can modify it. We can make it deeper. We can make it sweeter. Um, you can give it a personality, right? So mm -hmm. you can kind of have it be playful or be a little snarky or whatever, or, you know, so it's not, uh, like the whole Labrador personality is what I like to call it. Like it's, you know, like a, a golden retriever every time that you're talking to it, uh, you know, it's always right. kind of happy and, you know, the tongue's wagging <laughs> and, you know, that's, that's kind of what I think of, um, but anyway, you can literally get to something that sounds like a person. They have all of the information. They're not going to lie to you. They're not going to make things up. They're going to know everything there is to know. If there's a technical issue, they'll be able to solve that technical issue, or the AI really will be able to solve that technical mm -hmm. issue without having to send you to a different department, without having you have to talk to five different people, without having you uh, have to sit on hold every time. So I'll name some names. The customer support I've dealt with at Comcast and AT&T um, was so bad in general. Um, just the, you know, I, I've i never been able to have a call that goes under an hour. <laughs> and I'm relatively busy. And, you know, you got to yeah. do it during business hours when, when you're working. So yep. for me to take an hour out of the middle of my work day to try to sit on the phone with one of these guys, um, you know, it's just a, a terrible experience. So I was reading mm -hmm. this article the other day. It said that 30% of Americans would rather shave their head than talk to customer support. <laughs> the, <laughs> I'm surprised it's that low. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, some people are bald already, I guess, right? So, yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, maybe they didn't talk to as many women or men. I don't know. But it, yeah. Yeah. it's not a good experience. And, and this isn't, no. it's not like I talk to 10 people and they're like, I love customer support. They're always great when I talk to them at, at AT&T or Comcast mm -hmm. or, or one of these big yeah. companies. It's, it's kind of a yeah. universal it, problem. So to be able to put this yeah. AI in, one, you deal with the problem of staffing, right? It's very hard to staff. Mm -hmm. You deal with the problem of training. It's very hard to train. Uh, you deal with the problem of language because a lot of this stuff ends up going offshore because of cost, right? Yeah. So now the language is perfect. Um, you deal with the waiting line problem that all of these guys, it's how many agents am I supposed to hire? Well, if I have mm -hmm. 10,000 agents, sometimes I'm going to have way too many agents and they're sitting around twiddling their thumbs doing nothing. You're paying yeah. guys to sit there doing nothing. Some of the time, there's an hour wait for people. And then anytime someone gets to the phone call, they're pissed off. And I think these guys are getting one star as soon as I get out of here. They're getting a terrible review yeah, online. Yeah. So you're going to have happier customers. You're going to have, you know, more satisfied customers where mm -hmm. their problems are solved faster. Uh, and it's going to save you money at the exact same time. I mean, it's just a win on every single level for the companies that implement this. 
Yeah. And then you can have, again, just like the sales people, you could have a higher level of person who's, you know, then can build relationships, can, you know, maybe give out advice, you know, do other things when you have all the baseline, you know, covered like that, uh, which again, I think is great. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, I, 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 I th so many companies, I, I can't stand it, have that what I call that stupid bumper sticker on their side to say, we are customer centric. We care. All we care about is the customers. And we, you think, no, go through your own process and just see how true that yeah, is. Yeah, that's exactly it. This could fix that. And then if you want to upsell that person, if you want to send them to another yeah. offer afterwards, hey, I fixed your problem. We've noticed that you don't actually have our newest uh, one gig internet service. Would you like that? Right. Yeah. Oh, we saw that you don't have, you know, we actually run a special this week, uh, combining HBO and, uh, you know, something else. Uh, would you be interested in that? You know, and then you can actually have it sell them some other services and they've only been on the phone for three minutes instead of an hour and a half. So they're, they're not yeah. dying to get off the phone already. And, you know, you could just die. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to stab themselves <laughs> quite yet. Uh, and, you know, the will to live. Well, but then they're going to be receptive to these things, right? Then they're going to say, yeah. oh, you want the new iPhone? Sure, we can we can upgrade you to a new iPhone right now. All you'd have to do is press one or or just say mm -hmm. yes. And it says, uh, yes, uh, great. We're sending you the iPhone. We'll be there on Tuesday. I mean, they can Absolutely. sell more. They can make more money doing it this way as well as cutting costs. So, I mean, there's so mm -hmm. much value there. And, and it's not just us building this. These types of yeah. tools are going to be getting built out across organizations at every level. Um, anything where people are taking data and taking it from one system, putting it to another, reading an email, right? Doing level one support, um, you know, where all of that is going to be replaced by AI, especially at the bigger companies, that the bigger companies... Yeah. Um, I know how these guys work. They're they're all working on this right now. They're all thinking about it. They're talking about it. The, this discussion is happening in every boardroom in America right now. Yeah, no, and, and absolutely. And I think the other thing, just in closing, I think it, it'll also, it'll force people, as you said, to look at their processes, to look at what they're doing, the inefficiency of it. Of it. And it's going to be quite, it, it's going to be quite uh, illuminating, shall we say, maybe shocking even for some companies to realize how inefficient they have been. And I think what's going to end up happening, if we stretch this out three to five years, the companies yeah. that put this into place, that are the early adopters, that get this working properly. And if you have an IT department, they should be able to do it. Um, this isn't rocket science. So the companies mm -hmm. that move early on this, their profits are going to go up. You know, their costs are going to go down. They're going to be able to sell more. They're going to be more efficient. They're going to make a lot more money. Their competition is going to struggle against them, especially as they are, you know, uh, have better customer support and better retention and all these other things that you yeah. want to get. And the other guys are either going to have to cut costs to try to compete. And now they're competing on price, which you never want to have to compete on price. And, or um, they're just going to get bought out. But, you know, so AT&T yeah. hasn't uh, come around. They're bleeding customers. Verizon is killing them now because they've implemented this. And I'm just making up two names, right? But, yeah. um, well, now... AT&T's market cap is 20 billion and Verizon's is 300 billion. Verizon can easily go and buy them out and roll them in and take all those customers and roll this out across mm -hmm. that organization as well. So I, yeah. I see the, the companies that don't move fast on this getting bought out or getting buried by the companies mm -hmm. that do move fast. This is yeah, this is, and let's face, and let's face it, Tom. As we know, human nature is such a strange thing. But like if we're upset about something and it's not working and then we have a really, really fantastic positive experience with the with the service and everything, you know, gets fixed and taken care of. We're like reform smokers, right? <laughs> we're out there. We're out there shouting from the rooftop. Oh, this is great company, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, conversely, you can have great, ex great experience with something up until the point where you need help with something. And then you're sitting like, this company sucks. Yeah, it's amazing how one little experience can ruin <laughs> the whole experience for you yeah, or make the exactly. whole experience. Exactly. And unfortunately, um, human nature being what it is, we default to our least, uh, our, our most... Um, 
or, you know, our least positive experience, right? That's what we default to. And we tend to spread that across the whole experience. Yeah, you're something like 10 times more likely to talk about yeah. a negative experience than a positive experience. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I had a great yeah. flight and everything was successful versus, yeah. you know, the, the, the bolt started the falling off, the door blew out, right? <laughs> the door blew out while I was flying. That's the story you're yep. going to tell. Not only oh, I went to the airport and uh, my seat was comfy exactly. and everything was smooth and uh, the flight left on time and uh, there was no issues. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Tom, this has been fantastic. All of Tom's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Bigly Sales. Yeah, so BiglySales.com, uh, we're the AI company. We've set up autoresponders. We can answer automatically any SMS, text for the lay people, right? Text messages, any email. <laughs> um, we'll have voice out in the next few months here to be able to, you know, really set up a full AI call center that can handle any volume of calls that you have cheaper, faster, more efficiently, uh, and with a better customer experience than you'd be able to by hiring sales reps or by hiring, um, mm -hmm. you know, SDRs or whatever you want to call them. So right. that's what we're doing. Perfect. Well, I would encourage you to go ahead and check out Bigly Sales, as, as Tom rightly says. I mean, this AI, it's not really a wave, it's more of a tsunami. And I think, uh, you know, if you're not, uh, if you're not looking at this right now, you've heard all the reasons why you should be. And, and I think, uh, I think everybody out there should be looking at looking at your business right now and looking at where AI can, you know, play a positive role in it. And again, as we said, Hopefully, it allows your people to actually operate on a higher level than everybody's happy. Yeah, any repetitive manual tasks, it's going to be just wonderful for. Yeah. Well, anyway, thanks again, Tom. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you.